Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, welcome. My name is Monica. And I saw Christy from Christy Reads A Lot and Be From Mama Nice Reading Romance do this video. And I just have to put my, I just have to put my two cents in because um, Riggs really do make the best husbands. And so here are my list of the best Riggs in historical romance, or at least my recommendations, because there's so many. So they did their um, collaboration a couple weeks ago and I was and I had a couple of Johanna Lindsay's books on my list and I'm going to link their videos down below and obviously I'm tagging them in this video because I'm really if they haven't read these like Christy and and B if you haven't read <laughs> Tender Rubble and Gentle Rogue why <laughs> they are fantastic um they are very much rakish, rakish and rogue heroes. And oh my gosh, like, because I know Love Only Once was mentioned, I think in, I think at least in um, Christie's video, if I remember correctly, I haven't re gone and rewatched it, but yes. See, in Tender Rebel, that's Anthony Mallory's book. And our heroine is Rosalind. And Rosalind's grandfather was a rake. And the title of my video is from Rosalind's grandfather. See, the title of my video comes from this book, um, Tender Rebel, because Rosalind's grandfather said that rakes make, rakes make the best husbands. And I'm like, okay, you have me intrigued. And I was already intrigued because of Anthony Mallory from Love Only Once. I love Love Only Once. This is one of my favorite um, Johanna Lindsay books. Um, this one, Rosalind is Scottish. She, her grandfather just died and left her an inheritance. Her no good uh, cousin, right? This guy wa wants her to marry him. And so he tries to, he wants to kidnap her to get her to marry him so he can get his hands on her grandfather's fortune. Well, she is clever enough to leave and go down to uh, London to get married right away. So this is a trying, she's trying to get into a marriage of convenience. And um, she meets Anthony Mallory. Well, he is definitely a rake. He is definitely a rogue. He loves his women. We see that in book one. In that, in book one, Regina's uh, intended his mistress, um, I'm not going to go into specifics, but there's a bit of a thing that happens in book one that we find out how much of a rake that Anthony is, right? And so we know that he loves his women, okay? And it, James, we also meet James Mallory, which is, we see him in book two. He gets his book two. That's Gentle Rogue. And we know that Anthony... His house is very much a bachelor pad. He has his nephew staying with him. So Rosalind thinks he has a son because Anthony, because James's son looks a lot like him. They meet in a garden at night because she's trying to get away from a guy who's trying to find her. Um, another guy, not, not the guy who's trying to kidnap her and another suitor. He's like, oh, I want you. And um, he manipulates the situation to get her into his bed. And of course, he's Anthony Mallory, and he succeeds. And of course, he's like, okay, now you have to marry me. He doesn't need nor want her grandfather's fortune. But does she know that? Mm-hmm. And I love this book so much. Oh my gosh, I gave it 4.5 stars. Um, the reason why I didn't give it five stars was because uh, Rosalind is such a strong heroine. I freaking loved her. She's just so, she's such, oh my gosh. The reason why I didn't give five stars was because she kind of annoyed me a little bit where there was a bar maiden and this goes, and this introduces our heroine in book two where he's like, trying to find 
her Scottish cousin to warn him off saying, you do not go near my woman or I'm going to beat the living crap out of you. Um, and then we meet Geor Georgiana, who's dressed up as a boy. And James Mallory finds out just how much of a woman she is in that tavern. And, um, and that barmaid drops a hair on, on her, her lapel, on his lapel. And Rosalind's like, you cheated, you cheated. And he's like, no, I did not cheat. I'm trying to find your cousin to, to war, ward him off. And so that goes on a little too long for me, but the banter is there, the, the spice is there, the, the classic bodice ripping is there he is such a good rake and rakes her grandfather's right the rakes do make the best husbands especially with anthony mallory and then james james mallory he cannot get georgiana or george out of his mind and that goes into gentle rogue and i have to tell you about gentle rogue oh my gosh this one Listen, man, Georgiana, she was looking for her betrothed. She's been betrothed for five years, right? And she's dressed up as a cabin boy, okay? Now, this is a classic bottle stripper, so there's some stuff in here. James was supposed to be a pirate. We're, we're not, he, but he's a retired pirate, so you're not going to get the piratey stuff. So be aware you're not going to get the piratey stuff. Although that cover is so gorgeous. I love that cover. I mean, come on, that cover is just fantastic. Why can't we go back to those covers? Whew. Uh, but I digress. Anyhow, but James Mallory, he cannot get his get Georgiana out of his head. But he loses her after the after the tavern. She finds her betrothed. He had defected from the during the revolution and goes to england and is married she's like well peace out dude you just lost a fortune because she owns with her brothers a shipping company and <laughs> a shipping company that james had actually pirated from oops <laughs> love it love it and um that comes into play later but i digress and he she goes and um decides to become and she she's like i just want to go home and she's with her uh friend cam who's a scottish man who's a family friend and she just like i'm i'm ready to go home i do not want to be in england anymore i hate the english they're evil they're they're bastards and la 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 and so because she hates the english because of the whole revolution anyway especially lords like the nobility she hates the nobility especially the nobility and what do you know? James is a Viscount. Anyhow, um, so she decides to become a cabin boy. And what do you know? James remembers her. And he knows that she is a girl. And so he does things to embarrass her. Like, he's like, I need help with a bath. I need help with this. And she's like, oh, shoot. And yeah. He does seduce her because he's a rake. He's a rogue. What is he's like, I'm gonna make her my mistress. Um, yeah, that does not work for her big brawny brothers, okay? It does not work. And yes, it is so good. It is so good. And he he it is a bodice ripper, so you have to be aware it's a bodice ripper, but he keeps throwing her over his shoulder and carrying her away. He's like, this is my woman. You are not taking my woman away from me, including away from her brothers. Her, He's like, you're not taking my woman away from me to her brothers. I'm like, rogues make the best husbands. Rogues make the best husbands. Come on. Another one that I have to agree with is The Secret by Julie Garwood. Julie Garwood this one is a Highlander um, romance, and this one is very much medieval. 
And this one is Kath Francis, Catherine, and Judith. And they were best friends. Judith was the English lady and Francis Catherine was the Scottish, mm, the Scottish lady, uh, girl. And they met during fairs. So when we meet Judith and Francis Catherine in the first chapter, they're little girls. And then they become friends and they stay friends. And when we start getting into the meat of the story, we find out that Francis Catherine is going to have a baby and Judith is determined to help her through the pregnancy. And during this time period, women generally passed during childbirth, that that was a very real, real thing. And so Judith was determined to help her friend safely through childbirth. So she studied midwifery and she ended up traveling to Scotland. And Francis Catherine is married to the Laird's brother. The Laird, his name's Ian, he takes a very quick shine to Judith and it is their romance. And he, and he's kind of, he likes his women too. He's a bit of Rick, not as much as the Mallory brothers, but he has his rakish ways. But he gets very protective over Judith. And I just love that. And I love the way they banter. And I just love the way he focused on her. And he and I love the way he helped Judith um, to take care of her friend. And I loved the story. But no, this is fantastic. I read this, loved it, will always continue to read Julie Garwood. Um, another rogue that I have to talk about, and I read this this last year, I think I read it in January, was Once More My Darling Rogue. This is Drake and Ophelia. This one is Amnesia, and this is, a this is an overboard retelling. Um, and this one is by Lorraine Heath. Lorraine Heath. Listen, she does rogues so well. I mean, the Earl takes all. There's so many. I could choose a lot from from um, Lorraine Heath. However, I wanted to choose this one because of the character growth. Drake is a rogue, but also he really puts Ophelia through her paces um, because she was so horrible to him. I originally did not like her in, in the beginning. But there's stuff that happens to her that she's not telling anybody about. This is the reason why Riggs makes the best husbands. Because he ended up protecting her. Yeah, he did some pretty unforgivable things to her. Where he made her her his, um, his, his maid. Like, because if you ever seen Overboard, you, you know the story where he put her to work to to humble her and to to make her pay back what he what she owed him but also he they grew to be friends and then they grew to be um lovers and stuff but when it came down to the to what happened to her he protected her and he went above and beyond what anybody else including her own brother would have done for her and that's why I'm putting this book in this list because Drake's do make the best husbands because that's what Drake did for Ophelia and what he did for her. And that's why I have to put it in here. I mean, the development between these two was just on point and chef's kiss. And that's why I have to put it in here. And he is definitely a rake and I highly recommend this one. And then of course, this one is in the title. It's nine rules to break when romancing a rake and this one is about um callie or calpurnia i think her name is and she is a wallflower she is she's on the shelf she's like i am not gonna get married why do i have to behave so she takes it upon herself to devise a plan a list of things that she wants to do like smoke a uh, smoke a cheroot and sneak into what I think White's or Brooks and um she gets the most rakish guy that she can think of to uh help her to help her do this and I've read this more than once and this takes place in Regency England I laughed out loud through this whole book it was just so delicious so Ralston is is our rake and he didn't 
want to help her at first but she has such an impeccable reputation that he's like okay i will help you if you help my sister launch into society because he just has he has a sister that needs help and she's like fine okay because his his first reputation's in shatters because he's a real right he's a real known scoundrel and um <clears throat> and so he helps her learn how to hold a saber and and to sword fight and and to smoke a cheroot and to and to sneak into whites and to gamble and to do the things that men are allowed to do that women are allowed to do and and as they're doing this stuff he is falling for her and she's falling for him and it is by far my favorite Sarah McLean book. I love this book so much. I reread this book all the time. And the last one I wanted to talk about is uh, The Devil in Winter. Okay, listen, I have, to, we've all had to mention The Devil in Winter because The Devil in Winter, Sebastian St. Vincent, come on. He is, I feel like he's one of the originals, okay? He is, he is like the cornerstone rogue in the historical romance canon um evie is the one of the wallflowers she stutters she has fiery red hair she has freckles she's social she's socially awkward but she needs to get out of an abusive situation that her her family put her into not her father but her mother's family her mother's passed away her dad's dying he owns um jenner's which is a gambling hell she's going to be inheriting a lot of money they're about to force her into a marriage to her cousin so they can get the money from her uh father's gambling hell well she needs a marriage of convenience right away and sebastian is a naughty boy if you read it happened one autumn you would know what he did because he was very naughty um she's like you need money i have money i need protection we need to get married let's please let's do this and he's like okay let's do this and so sebastian and evie go to gretna green and get married and he does the little things he keeps her foot feet warm with uh, warming stones he helps her with little things it's the little things. It's the the hand brushing. It's keeping her feet warm. It's protecting her from her from her her um, horrible family, and he helps her nurse her father on his last days. And oh my gosh! And then they have such passion. And like I said, the rakes make the best husbands. I. That is so anyway, Roslyn's grandfather was right. Rakes do make the best husbands. Let me know if you have any recommendations for me down below. And if you made it this far in this video and you want to let me know that you've been here, please leave me a black heart emoji. And until next time, my friends, happy reading. Bye.